Although Italy's Ndrangheta crime syndicate has been around since the late 18th century, the group recently made global headlines taking center stage at the world's most extensive mafia trial in decades. The Ndrangheta has surpassed Sicily's famous Cosa Nostra to become one of the most powerful organized crime groups in all of Italy and one of the largest in the world. But how does the Ndrangheta really operate? Find out by watching this video. Even though it was only recently categorized as a mafia in Italian law in 2010, the Ndrangheta clan has been around for as long as its pretty well-known sister group, which is the Sicilian Cosa Nostra. The name for the cartel first entered the public consciousness during the 1980s and 1990s, when the Ndrangheta clan carried out a series of kidnappings across Italy in one of the bloodiest chapters of Calabrian history. In the year 2007, it stepped onto the global stage when an internal fight led to the public murder of six Italians in Germany. And by the end of the 2010s, the Ndrangheta was quite famous around the world for working on a major transatlantic cocaine ring. Moreover, the clever group's singular name has Greek origins, and the word Andrangatea means a society of men of honor, and also Andrangato means to do military actions. Like any other mafia from Italy, the Andrangata Mafia is highly secretive and operates within strict honor codes that are deeply embedded in the societal values of Calabria. It has built a name on the violence of its feuds, the reliability of its business affiliates, with its political influence as well as its worldwide presence. Moreover, the Andrangata can move and settle in areas beyond the Calabrian region and has a flexible family-based web-like structure made up of various clans, very similar to Al-Qaeda. In this society, the local roots count for as much as global reach. The Andrangata legend holds that the organization can be traced back to the 16th century, and with the arrival in Italy, three Spanish knights who have founded the so-called honored societies called the Sicilian Mafia, the Neapolitan Camorra, as well as the Calabrian Andrangata. It's made up of a sprawling network of Indrina, or clans, rooted in Calabria at the toe of the boot-shaped Italy, and the syndicate is believed to take in more than $60 billion annually. Also, the group's interests run the spectrum of economic activity ranging from outwardly legal enterprises in construction and green energy and waste management to criminal schemes involving fraud, extortion, high-level corruption and trafficking of humans and weapons. Much of what people know about the Andrangheta came to light in 2010 when Operation Crimine arrested 305 members. Also, in the subsequent court trial, anti-mafia prosecutors proved that clans in the province of the Calabrian capital, which is Reggio Calabria, were coordinating with the chambers of control in Australia, Canada and the north of Italy. The family clans, known as Indrina, formed strategic alliances with each other through blood or some sort of marriage ties across villages in the area. Each member in Drina then shared business with affiliates and family members and outside of the region or even internationally, while at the same time responding to local coordination structures like the Crimine and the figure in charge of resolving issues along with the hostilities across the mafias. Communication was usually conducted in code over the phone and online when necessary. The revelation of these coordinating structures primarily in place to help the Andrangheta boost business and share risks has led many to think of Indrangheta as a stable, monolithic criminal group with a strong similarity to the Sicilian Cosa Nostra. The Indrangheta has surpassed Sicily's famous Cosa Nostra to become the most powerful organized crime group in Italy, and it is one of the largest in the world. The police across Germany, Italy, along with Bulgaria, have carried out synchronized raids on 46 buildings for possible connection to the Indrangheta and the attacks were part of an investigation under the leadership of the European Public Prosecutor's Office, stated German police in a statement. Even though Italy's Ndrangheta crime syndicate has been around since the late 18th century, this group recently made global headlines taking center stage at the world's most extensive mafia trial in decades. Today, the Ndrangheta cartel is estimated to earn more than $60 billion annually, which is more than Deutsche Bank and McDonald's put together. To put it in perspective, their yearly revenue is more than the GDP of entire countries such as Jordan, Lebanon, and Uruguay. More than half of the cartel's income comes from Europe's cocaine trade, which is thought that they control more than 80%, reports the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, or OCCRP. Alongside all the narcotics, the crime network is known for several criminal schemes involving money laundering and tax evasion with millions of dollars, fraud, extortion, 
high-level corruption and weapons around the world. In a sense, the name Ndrangheta is more like a brand. It refers to both criminal organizations, like the one we heard about from Operation Krimene, however also to a set of behaviors that disparate criminal groups adopt. In the process of Ndrangheta-ization, any group which shares Calabria's shared cultural values and relationships through the use of violence, prevarication, arrogance, intimidation, as well as subjection while engaging in illegal activities for profit, can lay claim to the name. For instance, clans coming from villages in the hinterland near Reggio Calabria establish themselves in Australia, and from there they can interact with Ndrangheta clans containing relatives in Canada through Calabria, while also maintaining profitable relationships with local criminal groups such as criminal motorcycle gangs. Moreover, the Ndrangheta's global business and profits are estimated to be worth about $72 billion a year, which is much more than McDonald's, according to an Italian financial analysis company. Its study was mainly based on information provided by Italy's Interior Ministry. Also, the crime syndicate is most famous for cornering various narcotics markets, but it is moving into other less dangerous businesses, such as real estate. It's Cosce, which is a term to describe a close-knit group of mafiosi, and they're working on all five continents. In the year 2010, Italy outlawed the Indrangheta. At the same time, the fact is the misconception of the Indrangheta clan as a single organization is likely to work to the benefit of such groups. Now, by adopting these behaviors, they can invoke the Indrangheta's terrifying international reputation to exploit weak political systems and invest in new ventures and grow. The prevalence and the versatility of the Indrangheta Mafia could also lead to innocent Calabrian migrants that are being incorrectly labeled as criminals. So, if authorities worldwide are to stop these activities, we must first understand the diverse as well as complex nature of the Indrangheta. In 2020, Interpol launched the International Cooperation Against the Indrangheta, or ICANN, initiative, a three-year worldwide plan to dismantle the Indrangheta networks and also operate. The Italian Department of Public Security funded it. ICANN targets to raise global awareness about the Indrangheta, understand their modus operandi, and share intelligence across borders. ICANN also includes the cooperation of Italy and 10 other countries, including the United States, Canada, Germany, and Australia. The European Judicial and Policing Forces also coordinated a joint sting as part of Operation Polino to crack down on the Indrangheta Mafia clans, which had been in motion since 2016. This operation involves hundreds of police, prosecutors, and investigative officers, the biggest of its kind to date in Europe. Then, in December 2018, they arrested about 84 suspects in Belgium, Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands. Then, in May 2021, the operation touted another success, arresting 31 Indrangheta suspects in Italy, as well as in Germany, and identifying 65 other suspects. The sting involved about 800 police officers and tax officials in both countries, but the effectiveness of the international battle against the brutal Indrangheta remains to be seen. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. If you liked today's video, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be always updated with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.